back end assembly. The back end assembly comes in two main packs. This is the first pack and it's marked back. We have the back base sill. We have four glazing bars which are angled across the top. There's a left and a right and there are two different lengths. We have a long set for the centre, the inner glazing bar, and then we have the shorter one which is the outer glazing bar. Next to that, we use two end braces. The braces have holes in the centre which are off centre. There is a left and a right version. We'll get more into this when we get into the main assembly. The final part of this pack is the cross brace. This goes right across the back section from one side to the other to give it strength and rigidity. The next pack is a corner pack. There are two of these in the set. One set goes for the front, one set for the back. Within this set we have the two roof corner bars, which you'll denote by the number of holes that we have down it. We also have an angle at the top here, and we have a second angle for the wall at the bottom. The top angle is denoted by the T you will see on the side. Again, these are handy. There's a left and a right hand. The left section has a cut on one end to an angle. There are two of them, a right and a left hand. The bottom section is cut square. To retain these together, we have the corner brackets. We have the ridge bracket and we have the leg brackets. The angle on the leg brackets, you'll denote, is greater than that on the ridge. Also, there are two ridge brackets. There is one that has an additional hole in the bottom. This is for the front. Don't get it confused with the back end of the greenhouse when you assemble it. For the back end, we need to use this one. And you'll find that we mark them rear a ridge back. As with the wall section when we built it, we've done some preliminary installation of the uh, T-bolts into the sill section. Note that the, two, the third hole in on both ends is left open. We don't put a bolt in there at this time. The rest of the assembly we have laid out on the floor in approximate position, ready to put together. First part to be installed will be will connect the corner section, this section here, to the base seal. We slide it on in position on the bolt. And we get the bolt in position of course. And with our nut driver, we just slide it down. Again, as before, it's a question of getting a balance between the seal section to the side until it's held together. We follow this through by going along with our four glazing bars. The shortest one is on the outside. And again, to note the top with regards to hand, right hand or left hand. We push that down and we nip it up tight. And we'll complete this right way along the bottom before we go on any further. We've completed the assembly at the bottom. We have all the glazing bars tied in. They're all snugged up nice and tight. We now move to the top end. Now, this is a very important part of your assembly. You take T-bolts. You want to insert three T-bolts in each one of the vertical glazing bars. You want two down inside, and then you want to put the one at the top for connection to the roof corner section. The same with the center. You want to put two down inside, And then the one again at the top for the roof corner section. Complete this on all four of your glazing bars. Okay, we've now got all of our T-bolts in the slots. We've got three T-bolts to each one of our glazing bars. We're now going to position our roof section of the corner bar over the top of the glazing bars. Just snug it in. This will hold it stable while we work in our corners. OK, 
Okay, they're both pushed down onto the glazing bars, and we're just going to again snug them up with the with the wrench. Now we come to the corner section. Now initially, before we start putting in our bracket and assembling it, we need to put some T-bolts into the slots. We need to put one T-bolt into the base slot. This is for connection of our bracket. The same on the leg. And then next, we need to put T-bolt up into the vertical slot on the side of the corner. This is for the connection of our wall later on. And what I recommend here is that just to keep it in position so you don't drop it or lose it, is to put a nut on it and just snug it up like so. That keeps it out of the way while we're doing our leg assembly. And the same on the leg itself. Now these two bolts that we've got in here, you'll want to do on both sides, both legs. Now we've got those in, we now move our leg into approximate position using the angle that we've got and drop our leg bracket over the top. into position. We'll put another on each one of these just to snug it down. They don't have to be precise at this time because once we start putting the side walls into it you may need to slacken these off to be able to get the, the side wall in. Okay, we now have all the bolts in holding our leg bracket in position. Our leg is there. I've just snugged all the bolts down to hold them in position. I'm now going to go over and repeat this operation on the other side. Both our side brackets, they're both assembled on now. Now we're into the centre. Remember again, you want to put your two bolts in on the vertical slot on both sides. Put your two base ones in, same way. Take your bracket and drop it over. Before I put the bracket over, remember, you want the two T's at the top together. If you've got it the other way around, your angles are out and something's not going to fit together. So now we'll go ahead and we'll just bolt this together like we did the sidewalls, and that should complete this section of the assembly. Next stage of assembly, we locate the bottom of the brace on the open hole in the base frame. And now one point to note on this is that this particular brace is handy. We have a right hand and a left hand. To denote the difference, when you drop the uh, brace over the two bolt holes, the centre hole should locate itself on the outer glazing bar, as you see it here. If the hole is down too far, then you have the wrong brace on the wrong side. Secondly, now installing the brace on this top bracket, you may find that when you drop it over the positions in the center of the uh, glazing bar and in the hole in the base frame, you may find that it doesn't quite line up. This could be because the frame itself has not been squared. You might have to pull the frame over a little bit just to square it in the position approximately before you can now uh, locate the bracket over the top of this bolt hole. Once that's done, you should be able to just tighten the whole thing down and again just snug it all up. You might have to adjust it again later on. Thank you. The next job is to install the cross brace across the back of the unit. First thing we need to do is to remove the nut from the second bolt down on the leg bracket in the corner. Next, we use the remaining T-bolts that were put into the slot on the two outside glazing bars, and on the centre glazing bars, we use the lower T-bolt that we put in the slot, which means we should still have one remaining T-bolt on either side above the brace that we put it in position. These will be used later for the fan bracket assembly. Okay, to do this, we'll go ahead and we locate and line up the unit across the frame, onto the T-bolts. 
secure at the top. Cross brace position all the way across the bolt down into place. Note this position on the two leg brackets on the corners. Also, we have it bolted across to each of the glazing bars across the centre on the back. Also, note that we still have the two remaining T bolts in the slots above the bracket. Finally, to finish off the back panel, what we do is we have the two fan mounting brackets which go in the back. If your unit comes with a fan, uh, you will need these brackets to be installed at this time. To place them in position, we take the two nuts off of the two blazing bars on the top, both sides. We lay the bracket open, note the position of the bracket, we have the outside face placing towards the base of the unit. And then we reinstall the nuts over the top. Then with the remaining two key bolts that we have in the slots, we take the bottom bracket. Again, this is positioned, this time with the inside facing towards the base of the unit. Drop that over those two T-locks. And we don't want this up in a set position at this time. We want to keep it down the way so that there's room for the fan when it comes in with glazing to be positioned. And we'll just put a bolt on there for now and we'll just tighten it down temporarily until we're ready to locate the fan in position. Now that completes the assembly of the back. As you can see, the positions of all the parts, they're all laid out. And it's a pretty solid unit at the present time. You can move it around quite easily.